Being able to maintain a sub 8% body fat is somewhat difficult, but it's not necessarily the getting there that is the hard part. It's the side effects that come with being lean. But as you start to investigate the research, you start asking yourself the question, when it comes down to being very lean, are the side effects actually from being lean itself or are the side effects from what it takes to get there? Now, I've been very lean for quite some time after I lost weight, and I've noticed that my symptoms of being lean have improved over time as my body has started to see this level of leanness as its homeostasis, so to speak. But I'm a research guy, and I wanted to look into the research, and as I started to investigate the research, I realized that much of the issues that we actually see in the true data, in the true research, are much more associated with what it takes to get there. So we're gonna talk about it. Is it really being lean or is it what it takes to get there? But more importantly, if you're trying to stay even sub 10% body fat, what kind of things should you do to ensure you don't run into these issues? So the first issue is going to be low levels of estrogen. Now we think commonly that estrogen levels should never be really high. And that's a female hormone, and for women it's different. For men, we should always have it low. Testosterone and estrogen play critical roles together. When estrogen levels are low, it causes some serious issues. Now, personally, I have no problem sharing my estrogen levels. My estrogen is at about a 17. Now, 17 is outside of the normal range on the low end, but not by much. Now, if you look at a study that was published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology Metabolism, they find that there is an inverse correlation between body fat and testosterone. Lower testosterone, higher body fat, lower body fat, higher testosterone. But they found that estradiol seems to be correlated more so with trunk fat. So more abdominal fat, more estrogen, less abdominal fat, less estrogen. So obviously as a lean person, you would typically have higher levels of testosterone, lower levels of estrogen. But eventually you end up in a phase where things do start to kind of downregulate altogether. Now my testosterone levels sit around 400-ish, which is low-ish, not terribly low, high enough where it doesn't cause a problem and low enough where my estrogen stays super low too. But we have to remember that fat tissue is what contains aromatase. So fat tissue contains the enzyme that converts testosterone into estrogen. So if you don't have a lot of fat tissue, you're not converting testosterone into estrogen very much. Now, what this can ultimately lead to if you're really lean and have really low estrogen is you end up with fatigue, you end up with a loss of libido, you can end up with sleep issues. A lot of times you end up with anxiety and you end up with irritability. Now, the most common issue that I face when I am lean is usually sleep related, but then it begs the question, once again, is it because you are working so hard to get to a certain state and that stress of getting there and getting lean is what's actually becoming an issue with your sleep, with your anxiety, with your stress, with your fatigue. So then we have to look at joint pain too. Now joint pain is something that you would definitely deal with if you're at a very lean level. And more than anything, it probably has to do with estrogen's relationship with hydration. The less estrogen you have, the less water you are holding. So in that particular case, you have less water that's able to get into the joints. So you kind of sit in almost a mildly dehydrated state if you're super low estrogen. In women's studies, we notice that estrogen plays a role with joint health and bone mineral density, but we don't really have data in men to see if that's true or not. Obviously, osteoporosis is more of an issue with women, so I'm inclined to think that the estrogen deal there is more important for women. But we do have to remember, man or woman, that it seems as though fat is required for the proper synthesis of vitamin D, particularly from the sun. So if we are low body fat, we may have an issue converting vitamin D, which means that we could increase our inflammation because vitamin D is required to modulate inflammation, and vitamin D is also required for the immune system. Now, again, I use myself as an example here my vitamin D levels are right smack dab where they need to be. I get a fair bit of sun, I eat a pretty high fat diet with a lot of vitamin D rich foods, but then again, I've never really run into a vitamin D issue. So that's one of those things where you check your vitamin D levels, and if you are lean, you keep things in check. So what I wanna talk about in this video is I wanna talk about ways that you can maintain this level of leanness too. So we'll kinda of weave that in as the video goes along. We also have to look at the immune system, right? How often we're getting sick and things like that. Now with low levels of estrogen, that can have an effect on our overall immune system. We can see that playing a role. 
However, it's not 100% concrete. We don't have 100% detail that low estrogen means a suppressed immune system. But what we do have is a study from the journal Clinical Endocrinology Metabolism that shows a U-shaped curve with low BMI, very low body fat, and high BMI and high body fat with cortisol. So what that means is that on each extreme end, very, very lean and very, very fat, you have increases in cortisol. And these high levels of cortisol can absolutely suppress the immune system. Now, again, once you are lean for an extended period of time, does your body adapt and reduce cortisol levels? Well, my fasted cortisol levels in mid-morning were pretty high. They were like 15-ish, which is pretty decently high. Now, if you fast a lot, if you calorically restrict, your cortisol levels are going to be high and there's no real way around that. In fact, if you adapt to that, that means you're no longer getting the benefit of fasting, you're no longer getting the benefits of caloric restriction as far as those catecholamines are concerned. So with that, is this an issue with your immune system? I think what you have to remember is that a lot of times it's the stress that it takes to get to a certain level of body fat, the serious caloric restriction, the serious exercise, and the stress that all comes along with that, that is what beats up your immune system because there's quite a bit of data that suggests that endurance work and heavy aerobic work can increase your risk of upper respiratory tract infections and decrease your white blood cell count. So therefore, your immune system is compromised. But what I suggest people do is if you are staying at a relatively low body fat and you want to stay there year round, is you need to work on what is called your energy flux. You need to work on moving more so that you can eat more, not moving more so that you can lose more weight. So if I'm at 8% body fat right now and I want to increase my metabolic rate and increase the systems and processes that just demand energy from my body, I will actually move more to allow myself to eat more because that increases that G-flux. And that means that there is an energy cost simply associated with burning more calories in general. So if I burn more and eat more, the whole system is moving at a greater metabolic rate, allowing me to increase my food intake while maintaining a level of leanness. With that increased level of food intake, increased metabolic rate, increased system and processes, increased immune system, potentially increased white blood cells, and that's how you're looking at doing this for the long term. Now with this, I also think having good amounts of fat are very, very important to come in from the diet. If you are lean, you have less available fat tissue to pull from. So if you have less fat tissue to pull from, your body starts seeking other fuels. So it might deaminate, it might break down proteins, it might end up using glucose, but if you're eating a low carb diet and you don't have available glucose, it's going to get that from somewhere. And if you don't have fat, it cannot get it from the glycerol backbone of a triglyceride, meaning you can't make sugar out of fat if you don't have fat to make sugar from. So it has no choice but to use protein or what you are eating in other substrates. This can be detrimental, and this is also energetically very expensive for your body, which makes you more fatigued. So with this, you need to increase dietary fats once you get to a level of leanness. That being said, to get to that level of leanness, sometimes it takes restricting fats. One of the ways that I get really lean is that I take periods of time where I reduce fat intake so that my body has no choice but to tap into stored body fat. But I'm very careful to make sure I reintroduce fats for proper hormone function, proper cholesterol formation, and simply proper fuel once I get to my desired level of leanness. So usually once I'm there, I add things like macadamia nuts in, I add things like coconut butter in, I add things like olive oil, macadamia nut oil, straight up avocados, really good healthy monounsaturated fats so that I'm not decreasing insulin sensitivity and I'm being able to increase those calories. So I don't wanna increase a lot of calories and I certainly don't wanna increase my insulin levels a lot. So I don't load up on carbohydrates, I load up on good quality monounsaturated fats. Now, as far as macadamia nuts are concerned, I popped the link down below for House of Macadamias. But if you wanna try them out, definitely recommend them. You've probably seen me talk about them. They're a sponsor on this channel, but they're literally the best tasting macadamia nuts. And that's a 20% off discount link. And you get a free 20 ounce bottle of cold pressed macadamia nut oil. So if you're skipping through this ad, then sucks for you because that is a really good deal. So 20% off plus a free bottle of cold pressed macadamia nut oil using that special link down below through House of Macadamia. These guys have done it right, all harvested in South Africa. They're the real deal. They also have macadamia nut bars, 
sugar-free chocolate-covered macadamias, but I'm gonna be real with you, just get the straight up macadamias. They are legit, legit. So that link's down below. So if you have less fat to pull from, you're gonna be fatigued. That's simple energy dynamics there. Like you're gonna be fatigued. But you're also gonna start to notice that your leptin levels decrease. And if leptin levels decrease, this can impact your hunger. This can impact your level of tiredness. It can impact a lot of different hormones and how you feel because there are feedback loops. So you have to be careful there. But one of the things you can check is your T3 levels. If you have gotten so lean and crash dieted so hard that you actually impact your T3 levels, you may want to actually increase carbohydrate intake a little bit. Okay, carbohydrates do seem to increase T3 a little bit more. If you suppress that so much, you need to back up, you need to increase calories, and you probably need to increase some carbohydrates. You should not be so lean that your T3 levels are low all the time because that implies that you're putting your body into a serious metabolic stress mode. Okay, I am lean and my T3 and T4 levels are right where they need to be. They're right smack dab in the middle, which indicates that as far as my thyroid is concerned, the metabolism is functioning just as it should. None of my blood values are completely out of whack. Now, what you wanna watch out for when you're very lean is your levels of inflammation. Is your CRP really high? Is your homocysteine really high? Is your oxidized LDL really high? So what you do to make sure that your reactive oxygen species are not going too high, your oxidative stress, is if you are super lean and your diet isn't in tune and you're not increasing calories, you need to kind of rotate your stressors. You're gonna notice your recovery is not as good. So for example, if you like to do cold plunges, you should not be doing cold plunges on the same day that you are doing resistance training or the same day that you're doing high aerobic work. Saunas should be used for recovery versus huge stressors if you've already worked out hard that day. Okay? You need to do these things that allow you to have an adaptive stress response, but you need to modulate them according to your nutritional intake. Now, another thing that I look at, of course, is with fasting. Okay, when I am very, very lean, I get very tired with fasting. Okay, fasting ends up becoming difficult because I don't have much to pull from. Okay, but if I get my body fat up to nine, 10, 11%, then I can fast more frequently and have much less of an issue. Another thing that you have to worry about when you have super low levels of body fat is libido. Now, again, we raise this question. Is it the low body fat itself or is it the act of getting there? And when you look at various case studies, there's not a lot of concrete research on this. There's wrestling case studies and bodybuilding case studies, which can be very difficult, especially with the bodybuilding case studies, because a lot of times there's exogenous hormones at play that we can't really fully investigate because it's a mixed mash of so much stuff. But basically what they've seen is like, okay, when people are dropping body fat, doing a lot of cardio and training hard, their sexual desire goes down. Well, is it a result of low body fat or is it a result of what it takes to get there? So I don't always agree with people saying, hey, being super lean is unhealthy. As long as you are able to maintain adequate caloric intake, not overly stress the body, there's not a lot of downside if your blood markers are where they need to be. That being said, if you notice your libido going down, that is sort of an evolutionary biological sign that you're not in a good place. But I cannot think of a situation where being lean would be a biological disadvantage unless you're in a cold environment. I can, however, think of a situation where being stressed and starving would be a biological reason to not reproduce. See where I'm getting with this? So you have to balance it once again. So how do you combat the metabolic slowdown? Well, for one, once you get to your desired level of leanness, like I said, you increase calories and increase activity. Take diet breaks. If you are in the process of getting leaner, you need to take time off every six to eight weeks for about 10 to 14 days at maintenance calorie intake. That means you bring your calories up to what it would take to maintain the current weight that you're at. I can't tell you that number, you're gonna have to figure it out yourself, but play with it. It's usually not much more or less than about 15 or 20% from where you are at the current time. This is gonna make sure that you're not crashing your metabolism as you're going down. Check your testosterone levels. If your testosterone levels start to plummet too much, you might need to increase your calorie intake, but more importantly, increase things like eggs and increase your cholesterol intake. 
okay? You also need to watch your T3 levels. If your T3 levels start to go down too much, you need to increase your carbohydrate intake a little bit. At the end of the day, when it comes down to sexual function, when it comes down to resistance training, when it comes down to your strength, these are all the things that you watch. And if you start to notice all three of those going down, then you need to increase the calories and get the body fat up a tiny bit until you feel a more solid spot to bring it back down. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.